Tap in, kid. Hello and welcome to the very bad batch displays that makes after show breaking down, discussing and reviewing each and every episode of the Disney Plus original Star Wars series, Star Wars, The Bad Batch. My name's Don Blight and joining me, Ashley Hopley. Hey John, excited to be here. Talking about clones. <laughs> Talking about clones, that's right. Uh back for season two, The Bad Batch. It opened with a two-part season opener, uh, titled Spoils of War and Ruins of War. The synopsis of the first episode was the Bad Batch plans a risky heist, and episode two, uh, the Rules of War synopsis was the Batch must decide who to trust as they plan their escape. Uh, they're both sort of terrible synopsises, as per usual. Uh, the plot of these two episodes more or less boils down to fights crabs, gets job, cuckoo's, uh, cuckoo's, Dooku's old place, let's go steal from it, are we as bad as the Empire, uh, maybe yes, no, all right, credits. Does that sound like a good... Um, yeah. Sorry? Yeah. So what is your thoughts on the two-part opener? It's fine. <laughs> it's interesting because uh, I've listened back to our season finale discussion of, mm. of season one, and we were, like, kind of, you know, mixed on it because it, it didn't feel like a season finale. This doesn't really feel like a season premiere. Yeah. <laughs> sure, it's a double <laughs> episode, uh, but... It, it, there's not a lot there to like. Pro- there's not a lot of propelling the story forward. Uh, there's it feels no like episode cliff- three and four. This feels right. like it could have easily been episode thirteen of season one. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like yeah. oh the com- you know whatever the the, the the planet got bombarded. Uh, they all left. What's uh, Crosshair? Um, and now they're still doing jobs. Yeah. Uh, the fun crab sequence was really, I thought, was really well put together. Uh, Omega looks like she's been doing, obviously, given more of an opportunity to like do stuff. Uh, her bow thing, in, utilizing a bit more than I think we saw in the the first season. Uh, I think the concept of uh, them looting Count Dooku's castle is a cool one. Uh, but you know, it it just ends up being a heist that goes wrong, and them trying mm. to survive. Mm. I uh, I was yeah. I mean, as simple as it is, I was disappointed. I was very disappointed with this uh, season premiere. Um, and I I sort of want to give this show uh, like enough. It's about to say I don't want to give it any more sort of free run just because it's like oh uh, you know I could be like yeah it was animated well it looks good and like you know especially like I was when it was starting, I was like watching that sequence of running on the beach and I'm like, oh, it's very pretty. And, you know, like, but yeah. I'm, I'm sort of like, okay, cool. Yes. But am I engaged in the story? Not really. The only, like, it just seems like such a, especially, and it, it, there is definitely an element of I'm coming into this. It's season two premiere. I'm expecting a bit more, but you know, screw me for expecting a bit more from a season premiere. This feels like a, if this had taken place next week, after like a cooler premiere, whatever, that's fine. I expect mm. that. I expect the, I expect the, you know, the, the episode three, four, episode two, three, whatever. The mission uh, of the week first, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I need, a, I need season opener to set up where the season's going. Like I need, I need some was idea. The, yeah. The premiere was, uh, obviously we were with, uh, order 66, uh, and like the, the bad batch kind of rebelling yeah. against that. Yeah. That's cool. That's oh, a clear cool. direction. Yeah. This is like, oh, there's still just doing random. jobs. And I don't want to say there's no story here. This, the story here is that Omega is... We're talking about the bigger of, picture. She's thinking about the bigger picture. Well, the couple things going on throughout these two episodes, and people may argue who really like this episode, these two episodes, maybe like, yeah, there was plenty happening here, you just didn't notice it. I did not not notice it. I just don't feel like it was just your typical in the background character moments for this show and i expect <coughs> in a season premiere more straight forefront in front of me storytelling i don't want this backseat stuff like that that's what i expect week to week this isn't what i want in the season premiere um you have stuff like the dilemma between different characters of the the clones you know it's very obvious that some of them side on the fact of we should be doing more we should we should join and be part of the rebellion and then you got the other ones um uh Oh, fuck. What's the name? Was that? Bloody, I can't remember. Hunter. 
Hunter, like Hunter's like, no, we should stay in hiding. We've got to, pro- got to protect um, Omega. And then Omega he- overhears all this stuff. And then she has this whole thing where she thinks she's now a, um, a burden. But then, yeah, you've got the whole, we should be doing more for the rebellion. Like, so I can tell, like, this is a setup. This is a through line for the rest of the season. Like what they should be actually doing. Should they be fighting for the rebellion? All this sort of stuff. But the thing yeah. is, I know they don't. Unless they're going to do some major weird retconning and stuff like that. You because don't by the time they we get to, you could be, they could end up working for somebody. By the time you get to Rebels, where Rex shows up, Rex is like, I'm working for the Rebellion. I know two clones who are alive. Here they are. These are the ones. Come join the Rebellion. Come meet Kanan and fucking... Maybe they faked their deaths. Yeah. Sure. Maybe he thought they died on Kamino. Possibly. I feel like... And it's... The most interesting thing in these two episodes is just Omega. Omega continues just to be the most interesting character in the show because she is original. Because she's not like anyone else. Because she actually has... Uh, you don't know what's going to happen to her. And not in a, oh, she's probably just going to either die or go into hiding sort of thing. Like, there's many directions that character could head in. Is that she's, she falls into a, a weird territory of... It doesn't really matter if... Like, she's not... I don't expect her to become a big part of the re- rebellion. I just... Like that that's not where I feel like her character goes. I just feel like her character could have like a really interesting story nonetheless. Like she's mm. um got this really interesting tying into the Camino and um Boba Fett and all these other sort of things. So that's all really I'll tell you what, I'm- since since the last season, I don't think they need to go visit Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> probably not, no. Yeah. I mean <laughs> was not. this before Boba Fett or after Bo- I can't remember the first season was before the book of Boba Fett okay and that's why I think after oh, it's we were all excited into- and theorizing yeah that's right yeah I was theorizing was that she show would up, show yeah. up in the book of Boba Fett like as a like, yeah. older character or something like that um, it's like yeah but, you can keep them away from each other because <laughs> yeah. these two episodes as much as I'm complaining about them still better than 80% of the book of Boba Fett um so, yeah, I mean, it, they were, they were, it's a fun two episodes. Is it a good premiere? No, I don't, I don't really think so. That's my, that's my major complaint. Like, how cool was that sequence where she's hanging off the, hanging onto the grapple hook, shooting the crabs? Really cool. How, like the, the whole part where they're like flying down in that cargo thing and like crash landing and whatever else. Like, that's all cool, but it's not. I, it's yeah. premiere, cool. I guess it depends on who, who do you think this target audience is? Well, this is the thing. I don't take this bullshit anymore because this isn't a show that's airing at 7 o'clock on the Cardi Network anymore like um, The Clone Wars was back in the day, you know? You say that, but, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff on streaming services that clearly is dedicated, focused at a certain audience. I think it's targeted at... Not kids? Older kids? I guess? Whatever. YA audience? Yeah, that age group. If you're looking at putting as a book, but I also just feel like the structure structure of the show just turns me off a bit. So I will um, say the episodes went by very quickly. Yeah, well, they're like twenty minutes. So. No, but even that, I I was like, what? It felt like I blinked and it was over. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't know. It's just sort of not a lot, a lot of cliffhanger stuff from the season finale too. Like not touched on at all, even across the two episodes. Sort of annoying. I mean, the only, like, sort of thing that happens at the end is old mate, the bad guy, shooting the, the one clone trooper. You get this whole moral dilemma. The, like, there is an interesting moral dilemma about, like, oh, we're going to steal from Dooku, but then are as bad as the Empire, who are also stealing from Dooku to fund their war Who's regime. Stole from we're the just people funding ourselves. Planet, yeah. we're, we're stealing from the we're stealing from the, the, the planet. Yeah, we're stealing from the, the people who actually live. Yeah, like there's that they have that they bring that up very quickly and then they're like, yeah, fucking forget about it though. <laughs> like we won't actually answer that potentially interesting hypothetical because this is for kids. But that's fine. Um yeah, it was acceptable television. It was just not a super engaging premiere. Um, if this, if I get this quality of episode next week, I'm probably going to be less likely to be annoyed by it because it's just the, the it's weekly like, joke. Oh, that's another episode, yeah. But if next week's is a lot more story driven than this, I'll be like, what the fuck wasn't this backwards? Like, what the? That'd be, that'd be a helpful thing. Anyway, yeah. Any closing uh, comments? I will say it's interesting. Uh, obviously, uh, it's Rampart. I think the mm. the human uh, 
officer or whatever who kills him. It's like, oh, it's interesting that he like killed somebody to cover up paperwork that he fucked up. Like, and obviously we've just come off Andor, and that's a show that <laughs> starts off, really the events of that show uh, happen because you know somebody doesn't do uh, falsifies paperwork to cover up a fuck up. Yeah. Maybe that's also hurting this show. I'm coming off an Andor watching this. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. You come off the high of the best piece of Star Wars yeah. content on had, Disney yeah. Plus. Uh, for this, yeah, which is fine. Um, cool. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Very Bad Batch. Please subscribe, of course, to this podcast feed for Holocron entries for all our other Star Wars content, including you can go back and listen to us discuss Andor and every week be shocked and continue to be like, wow, this show's really good. This show's really good. Wow, this show's really good. Um, anyway, I'm on here being like, this episode is meh. Uh, follow on, us on Twitter by heading to explosionnetwork.com slash Twitter. Join our Discord, explosionnetwork.com slash Discord. And if you like this episode and want to tell us, head on over to explosionnetwork.com slash support to donate as little as a dollar. How about the show? Keep the lights on. Keep the lightsabers swinging. Until next week. Dylan, you know, you know what they say. Count Dooku's war chest brings all the clones to the yard. And they're like, it's very shiny. <laughs> <laughs>